Have you ever wondered how South Korea, once a primarily agrarian society, transformed into a global economic powerhouse in just a few decades? Our story begins in a time when South Korea's economy was deeply rooted in agriculture, with rice reigning as the staple crop. This was a time when farming was not merely a livelihood, but the lifeblood of the society. The landscape of the Korean peninsula, painted with vast expanses of paddy fields, bore testimony to this agrarian lifestyle. As we delve deeper into the annals of history we find ourselves in the midst of the Three Kingdoms period, stretching from 57 BC to 668 AD. This era marked the establishment of trade with neighboring regions. China and Japan in particular emerged as key trading partners, offering an early glimpse into Korea's potential for economic expansion. However, things took a drastic turn when Korea came under Japanese rule in 1910. The annexation by Japan in 1910 marked a dark period for Korea. This event triggered a drastic shift in Korea's economic landscape. Japan, hungry for resources, integrated Korea's economy into its own empire. This was not a merger of equals, but a forceful imposition. Korea's economic focus was redirected towards resource extraction and labor-intensive industries. The goal? To fuel Japan's military ambitions and industrial growth. Korea's rich resources were exploited, and its labor force mobilized to support Japan's war efforts. The Korean economy, once rooted in agrarian practices, was reshaped to serve the needs of the Japanese Empire. This period was characterized by a harsh exploitation of both human and natural resources. The end of World War II in 1945 signaled the end of Japanese rule. However, this did not bring immediate relief to Korea. The country was left in ruins, its economy struggling to recover. Following the end of World War II, Korea was left in ruins with a struggling economy. In the 1950s, South Korea faced the daunting task of rebuilding its war-torn economy. The nation, heavily reliant on U.S. aid, turned its focus back to its agrarian roots. The fields that were once battlefields began to yield crops again, with rice being the mainstay. Amidst these struggles, the country's gross domestic product, or GDP, remained very low. To give you a sense of the economic landscape in 1953, South Korea's GDP was only around $1.5 billion. The average income per person, a mere $70. These were challenging times indeed, yet the nation pressed on, utilizing foreign aid and instituting land reforms to sow the seeds of recovery. It was a period of hardship but one that laid the groundwork for the economic growth that was to come. However, a significant change was on the horizon with the advent of the 1960s. The 1960s heralded the start of South Korea's first economic miracle. From the ashes of the war, the country began to rebuild, and under the leadership of President Park Chung-hee, the nation embarked upon a journey of rapid industrialization. Park's administration, which began in 1961, initiated a series of ambitious, five-year economic plans. These plans were designed with a single-minded focus on economic growth, and they bore the seeds of what would become a remarkable transformation. The primary goal was to modernize the economy by moving away from agriculture and focusing on industrialization. The first five-year plan was launched in 1962, and it set the stage for a decade of unprecedented economic growth. The plan prioritized key industries such as textiles, electronics, and chemicals, and it aimed to foster an environment conducive to business, innovation, and entrepreneurship. The government's efforts bore fruit, and the results were nothing short of extraordinary. Between 1962 and 1971, South Korea's gross domestic product, or GDP, grew at an average annual rate of 8.9%. To put things into perspective, in 1969, the GDP had reached approximately $3.9 billion, a significant increase from the early days of the decade. Meanwhile, the per capita income had more than doubled, rising to around $160. This period of rapid growth and industrialization wasn't without its challenges. The country had to grapple with issues such as income inequality, environmental degradation, and labor unrest. But the gains were undeniable. South Korea was successfully transforming from a war-torn agrarian society into an industrial powerhouse. The 1970s brought about another shift in South Korea's economic landscape. But that's a story for another time. For now, let's take a moment to appreciate the remarkable journey that South Korea embarked upon in the 1960s, a journey that laid the foundation for its rise to become one of the world's leading economies. 
The 1970s marked a shift towards heavy and chemical industries. This was a time when South Korea's economic landscape started to take on a more industrialized look, moving away from the textiles and electronics of the previous decade. The government, recognizing the potential for growth, implemented policies that favored the development of heavy industries such as steel, shipbuilding, and petrochemicals. This shift was not without challenges. The world was grappling with global oil crises which threatened to derail economic progress, but South Korea's economy proved resilient, continuing to grow robustly even in the face of these challenges. One of the key players in this transformation was the Chaebols, major conglomerates that became household names not just in South Korea, but around the world. Companies like Hyundai, Samsung, and LG were founded during this period and played a crucial role in the industrial transformation. These Chaebols became the backbone of the South Korean economy, contributing significantly to the country's GDP. The Chaebols were more than just companies, they were and still are powerful entities that have a significant influence on the South Korean economy. They diversified into numerous sectors, creating a vast network of businesses that spanned the globe. The results of this shift were impressive. By the end of the 1970s, South Korea's GDP stood at around $63.5 billion with a per capita income of $1,200. This reflected an annual growth rate of approximately 9%, a clear testament to the country's economic resilience and the success of the government's policies. In short, the 1970s were a transformative period for South Korea's economy. The shift towards heavy and chemical industries, coupled with the rise of the chai bowls, set the stage for the country's future economic success. It was a decade of change, a time when South Korea began to create its identity as a global industrial powerhouse. Entering the 1980s, South Korea was set to fully integrate into the global economy. The stage was set for the next chapter in the country's economic history, a period that would see South Korea become a key player on the international stage. The 1980s and 90s were decades of stabilization, global integration, and technological advancement. As South Korea's economy matured under President Chun Doo Hwan's administration, the focus shifted towards economic stabilization and market-oriented reforms. The nation was gradually integrated into the global economic system, a transition symbolized by the 1988 Seoul Olympics. These efforts bore fruit, as by the end of the decade, the nation's GDP had soared to approximately $194.4 billion, with per capita income hitting $4,900. The 90s ushered in an era of technological advancement. South Korea emerged as a major exporter of electronics and automobiles, with industry giants such as Samsung and Hyundai leading the way. However, the path to progress was not without its bumps. The Asian financial crisis of 1997 dealt a severe blow to the South Korean economy, causing a sharp contraction in growth but the resilient nation rose to the challenge, securing a $58 billion bailout from the International Monetary Fund and implementing significant economic reforms. These reforms, coupled with a renewed focus on technology and innovation, propelled South Korea towards a swift recovery. By the end of the decade, the economy had not only rebounded but it had also achieved remarkable growth. The GDP in 1999 reached approximately $411.9 billion, reflecting a growth rate of a staggering 10.7%. As South Korea stepped into the new millennium, it had evolved from a war-torn agrarian society into a leading global economy. The nation's remarkable transformation was a testament to the resilience, hard work, and ingenuity of its people. By the turn of the millennium, South Korea had firmly established itself as a global economic powerhouse. The new century brought with it new challenges and opportunities for South Korea. As the country stepped into the 2000s and 2010s, it established itself as a global leader in technology and innovation. Companies like Samsung and LG not only dominated the domestic market but also emerged as key players on the international stage. In this era of rapid technological advancement, South Korea's gross domestic product saw significant growth. By 2017, the GDP had reached a staggering $1.6 trillion, growing at a rate of 3.1%, with a per capita income of $31,500.
Fast forward to 2021, the GDP had grown to around $1.8 trillion, with a robust growth rate of 4% and a per capita income of $35,000. Today, South Korea stands as a testament to rapid economic transformation, but the journey to this point was far from easy. South Korea's economic journey is a story of resilience, ingenuity, and relentless effort. From its humble beginnings as an agrarian society through the tribulations of Japanese annexation and the ravages of war, it has risen to become a global economic powerhouse. This transformation was powered by a series of strategic decisions and bold economic reforms. From the push for industrialization in the 60s to embracing heavy and chemical industries in the 70s, and a shift towards global integration and technological advancement in subsequent decades. Today, South Korea stands as a leading player in the global economy, a testament to its innovation and economic tenacity. Its major conglomerates like Samsung and Hyundai are household names across the globe, symbols of South Korea's economic prowess. So next time you use a Samsung smartphone or drive a Hyundai car, remember the remarkable journey that made it all possible.